Um, so uh, thanks for coming. We are here uh, embarked on a one and a half hour slot about ADA in Debian, um, but also in other distributions. Um, I'll be doing the first part of this uh, talk for about 40 minutes. Then take some questions, and in the second part, uh, Miguel here will uh, provide you with a live demo of how to create a package of some ADA software in uh, Debian. Um, so, um, about these slides, I'm going to skip over very quickly over the first few slides because I've already covered them in past presentations here at Boston in 2006 and 2009. So I'm going to just keep on very quickly, and then I'm going to the meat of this uh, this year's presentation some, with some new material, which is fairly technical. So I'm going to spend some more time on this. Um, so I'm not going to just read aloud what the slides say. Um, so I'll just keep over on, on this one in the next few ones because well, the data community is something you either all know about or you don't care. I suppose this is how the data distribution works. Um, the one interesting point on this slide is the, the 14 architectures supported. Um, and this is especially important as regards uh, ADA because um, there is no other uh, binary distribution that covers all these architectures. In fact, the Debian was the first one the first distribution ever to provide support for MIPS or for FreeBSD the data. How does Debian work? Uh, this is really how does Debian packaging work. Uh, we do all our work in the unstable distribution of Debian. This is where we upload the new versions of our packages. And when, when we uh, think that the packages have reached a sufficient level of maturity, of stability, that they automatically migrate to testing. And once they are in testing, they can be replaced with new versions. And once testing no longer has any release critical bugs, and this covers all packages, uh, then it becomes a stable release. And this is happening this weekend, I believe. Uh, Debian version 6 squeeze is being released just now as so, so it's quite major because uh, this is the first release in two years. Uh, the fact that the releases take two years is actually a good point for the target audience that I'm looking at. But we'll see that later. So what do we provide? in Debian for the ADA developer. The first part, uh, the first set of packages that we provide is really the development platform by itself. It consists of the uh, GNAT compiler. GNAT is actually the ADA frontend of GCC. So it is really part of GCC. And the packaging work that I do on GNAT is done together with the GCC maintenance of Debian. Uh, there are some complementary packages like ASIS. ASIS is a library that allows an ADA program to read the abstract syntax trees provided by the compiler and thereby to analyze other ADA programs. So it taps into the compiler to analyze ADA programs. And there are some interesting applications to that. Uh, apart from the classic 3D printer, uh, you can have uh, there is a tool, uh, which is also in Debian, uh, which is a uh, rules checker. It will try very hard to find bugs that even the compiler doesn't see. Uh, and you can customize this by writing new rules very easily. Uh, GDB, um, in years past, we had to have a special patched version of GDB to understand the ADA syntax, so, so as to be able to um, debug ADA programs, but this is no longer the case as uh, this, uh, these patches have been integrated upstream, so they are now in the stock GDB, so we can simply reuse the existing GDB of Debian to debug ADA programs. Polyorb, that's another interesting package. 
It's new in Squeeze. It wasn't present in, in the previous version of Debian. Uh, this is uh, an extensive framework to create distributed programs. That is, programs that run across a network of machines <coughs> rather than a single machine. And unfortunately, I can't spend a lot of time on this, but um, basically, uh, in the ADA language, there is a special needs annex, annex E for distributed systems, that makes it possible to write distributed systems in the language, not by calling library calls, but it's really part of the language. You declare some types, some procedures, and then you simply add a pragma in the source code saying, oh, by the way, this is a remote call interface, and shibam, it becomes distributed. So it's all integrated in the compiler, and it gets uh, the, the runtime support is provided by Polyorg along with uh, some utilities that allow you to specify how uh, your program is distributed across different machines. Uh, Gnat GPS. This is the um, the major Ada uh, integrated development environment, at least for those who uh, don't like Emacs. Um, which is also provided, and Ada mode for MX, of course, which is simply part of MX. Ada Browse is a documentation system uh, that uh, is based on ASIS. So it uses uh, ASIS, it, so it reads the, the abstract syntax trees from the compiler, and then it extracts documentation about your sources, and, and it's done in HTML with cross references in HTML. Ada control is uh, the coding rules checker that I was mentioning earlier. It allows you to create uh, rules uh, to check uh, for compliance of sources with uh, some uh, corporate rules of, or to avoid bugs or to try to detect bugs before they hit. Uh, then you have a, a number of logging frameworks like libalog, um, Arven and libaunit are both unit testing frameworks, so you get a choice. And then there's a VHDL compiler and simulator, which is written in ADA. It's actually uh, not just written in ADA, it's also another GCC front end written in ADA. So it really uh, takes VHDL source code and MS object code just like any other GCC. And it's a front end written in ADA, so it has to, you know, have, you have to compile it using ADA. And so it's, it's provided. Then you get the ADA 2005 <coughs> reference manual uh, in a variety of formats. And this is interesting because the, the ADA 2005 reference manual is the official ISO standard for the language. And I can't think of any other language, by the way, uh, for which the ISO standard is freely available and part of the main, the main part of Debian, which is uh, DFSG compliant. So you can get this ISO standard, you can modify it, you can copy it, you can reformat it, you can do whatever you like. And so it's provided as HTML, as info, uh, as PDF, as uh, plain text, uh, so you can browse it very easily. Um, another good thing with this ISO standard is that it is quite readable as far as standards go. So it's, it's become customary for, for ADA programmers to refer directly to the ISO standard when they need to discuss precise uh, aspects of the language. The second part, the second set of packages that are also provided in Debian is an extensive set of libraries. Um, when I started the, uh, packaging these libraries back in 2003, um, there were not a whole lot of libraries available um, in any Linux distributions. So I've picked basically one library in each uh, application domain that might be relevant to programmers. So you get pretty much one library, at least one library for anything you'd like to do. So you have uh, Florist, which is a POSIX interface. It's actually an implementation of the official POSIX.5 standard, which is the uh, ADA interface to operating system services. 
uh, which is much cleaner than to use in the C interface because you never get error results instead you get exceptions, for example. That's one, one nice thing with uh, this uh, ADA interface deposits. Uh, then you have a, a number of uh, networking, uh, well, in, uh, in broad sense, networking libraries. We have ADA CGI that allows you to write CGI programs that run in the web, web browser, a web server. You have a sockets interface. And then you have AWS, which is the ADA web server itself. Uh, AWS is interesting because it allows you to run <coughs> a web server in ADA or to embed a web server in your ADA application. It's a library, so you can simply link your application with this web server and then uh, you could choose to provide both a graphical interface to your application and a web interface. Or to provide a graphical interface and a web administration interface, whatever you like. Another thing that you can do with uh, AWS is a completely self-contained web application server, which is one file. Because if you like, you can have all your data and all your resources compiled into your executable program. So this makes it possible, uh, for example, to write an application with some data, an inter interactive web application, compile it into one statically linked executable, and simply copy that executable over to a remote server, and there you have a web server. The security with it is very good, because it's all statically checked. Uh, it's all subject to the, to the very stringent uh, rules of ADA that try to prevent bugs before they hit. So you get all the benefits of a strongly typed language, all the benefits of a statically linked executable, and all the benefits of a compiled language, because it runs fast. So it is really quite interesting. Uh, then you have uh, GTK ADA, which is an ADA binding to GTK. Uh, you have text tools. That's well the reason, the main reason why Packers text tools was for beginner programmers who are learning to program and they're not yet uh, ready to uh, create graphical interfaces. So text tools is a nice, you know, it's easier. Uh, for the beginner programmer to want to write uh, hello world in text mode and, and provide menus and simple stuff like that. That's really didactic. Then you have XML ADA, which is a full XML uh, suite for ADA. It doesn't just include a DOM parser and a SAX parser, but it also includes a whole uh, suite of Unicode um, support uh, functionality because Unicode is part of XML. <coughs> Then you have not one, but two bindings to databases. You have one which is uh, GNAID, uh, which supports um, several database backends. I think it supports PostgreSQL, uh, SQLite, MySQL. Uh, not, not MySQL, not anymore. Um, and a couple others, I believe. And then uh, an ODBC interface. And then you have APQ which is a more general framework for uh, database programming that currently only has the uh, PostgreSQL backends uh, compiled, but the other backends are in development and they will be coming soon. Uh, then you have libraries for scientific computing. You can, uh, there's a binding to uh, PL plots and uh, GNP ADA, which is the GNU multi-precision library. So you have an ADA binding to it so you can link this library with your ADA programs. Then Open Token is a library that allows you to write uh, lexers and parsers without resorting to lex and yak. Because you actually write your, say, recursive descent parsers directly in ADA using this library, and they're very, very easy and fast to write. It's actually easier to write a recursive descent parser with Open Token than with lex and yak. Uh, templates parser, uh, that's a companion library to the ADA web server. What it does is that it takes a template um, with some uh, placeholders and it will replace the place placeholders with data that you provide. So it's, it's actually what uh, AWS normally uses to provide dynamic uh, web pages. 
Uh, think of it like the ADA equivalent of Java server pages, something like that. Uh, then Narval is a specialist uh, scientific application which leverages Polyorb. It is a distributed data acquisition framework which allows you to run, it runs on many machines. Each machine acquires some data from some sources, applies some filters to it, and then collects the results, collects uh, in one single uh, place, and sends those results to a central server for, for post-processing. And it's a framework in that you can write new filters and new data sources and new data transformations as shared libraries, as plugins. And you can write these uh, filters in Ada or you can write them in C++. Both languages are supported. So all in all, <coughs> currently I'm talking about uh, Squeeze, which is released now. We have about 1.8 million lines of ADA code compiled and um, prepackaged and ready to go for the, uh, for the end user. Which I believe is the largest distribution in existence now. Now, a uh, little bit more about uh, the GNAT compiler. Like I said earlier, GNAT is really the ADA front end of GCC. It's in the integrated in GCC. And there are two places where you can get GNAT. One is the Free Software Foundation website, the gcc.org. And the other is the company Ada Core. Uh, this company um, has the original authors of GNAT in it, so it was founded by the original authors of GNAT. And its business model is to provide um, uh, support services to paying customers and the software is always free. So a paying customer pays a support contract to Adacore and receives the compiler under a free software license along with all the other libraries. Uh, Adacore is actually a member of a number of uh, free software organizations. Uh, they, are, they sit on the boards, I think, on the steering committee of GCC. Um, and they are yeah, they're very active in the free software world in general. What do they do? In, in addition to providing the compiler to paying customers, they also provide a pure GPL edition of their uh, compiler and libraries uh, to anyone who wants it. So you can download these binaries from their website and install them on a number of platforms. So they support Windows, they support Mac OS X, they support uh, uh, various editions of Linux and you can get all the sources under a pure GPL license. Uh, there are a few people who don't like this, the fact that even the runtime library of a compiler is under GPL because that implies that when they write ADA software, if they want to distribute the software to other people, then they must do so in terms of the GPL. In contrast, if you take uh, GCC from the Free Software Foundation, then you get the uh, runtime library with the runtime library exception in this license. It's GPL version 3 with a runtime library exception. So this allows people to write proprietary software in ADA using a free compiler. So the policy that I've been using in Debian since 2003 was to choose only one version of this compiler and provide only one in Debian that supported very well. And the consequence of that is uh, that all the libraries are compiled with the same compiler and they are all com compatible with one another at the binary level. Uh, this slide is really relevant for previous versions of GCC where uh, it was under GPL version 2 and the uh, Free Software Foundation version of GCC had a special exception, uh, it was a kind of a special language, which is identical in spirit to, to the current uh, runtime library exception. So it's, it's, this uh, slide is really for historical purposes. So a little history of what I did um, 
since I started maintaining GCC or Gnat in Debian. The first thing I did was uh, I packaged the uh, then current version of Gnat, which was 3.15, <coughs> which was based on an even older version of uh, GCC at the time, the 2.8.1. It was at that time it was uh, possible to, to download the sources uh, to the compiler, but there was no public bug database. So I decided to use the Debian bug tracking system as the public bug database for Debian, because there was no upstream bug database. And then I started receiving uh, bug reports from various people, and over the course of maybe two years, um, I had about 120 bug reports with test cases and other producers, which I forwarded upstream to Ada Core, and they eventually fixed most of them. After that, uh, in the um, subsequent version of Debian, I switched to uh, uh, really GCC because Ada became integrated into GCC, and so now uh, this is no longer applicable. The upstream of Godzilla database contains uh, all the Ada bug reports. What I did, uh, though, uh, which was uh, challenging for me and quite interesting, was to provide two new libraries produced from the sources of GCC. One uh, which I called libgnat vsn. It contains uh, those parts of the compiler that emit and that read back the abstract syntax trees, which is the part that ASUS uses. So that with this library, it becomes possible for ASUS to share with the compiler the exact same code. And so, uh, by construction, it is guaranteed that ASUS is always compatible with the compiler. Otherwise, uh, you might get uh, into trouble with other uh, distributions. If you, if you uh, compile your program with uh, GNAT, it emits the abstract syntax trees, and then you try to read them back with ASUS, and ASUS says, no, I'm, I'm the wrong version, or the compiler is the wrong version, which simply refuses to process these trees. This is no longer possible in Debian because they share the same code. The other library is the GNAT project manager, uh, which is uh, under pure GPL because it's not part of the runtime library proper. It's really part of the compiler. Uh, this is the part that reads the project files. Uh, I'm not going to explain what project files are right now because Miguel will explain that to you in detail later. Uh, but basically, um, uh, let's say that um, the Ada language uh, provides for a separate compilation in the language, which implies that a compiler must <coughs> implement the functionality of make. It has to detect dependencies between source files. It has to choose which ones need to be recompiled and which need not. And then it has to somehow to find, or to discover all these data sources to see which ones are up to date and where, where the object files are. So that's what project files are for. This library, uh, GNAT-PRJ, is now uh, shared between the compiler um, and with uh, GPS also. And for you all. I have a question. Yes. Uh, these libraries, are these uh, used by GCC? Or are they is, is just, um, uh, just in Debian? They are just in Debian. And the reason is that the, the patches to create those libraries are quite invasive. And I'm currently uh, trying to... Um, the, the problem is that they break multi-lib support. That's, that's the big problem with these patches. And, and multi-lib support did not exist when I created those patches. Now it is in, in the uh, Ada part of GCC also. I'm trying to restore multi-lib support and then I will submit these uh, patches upstream. So for now, they are only in Debian. So a little bit of uh, history again about what I did in um, past versions of, the, of uh, Debian. So as you can see with each new version of Debian, I, s I settled with one version of the compiler and decided to support that one. 
<coughs> so since uh, Edge, we have support for GNU K3 BSD, and I, like I said earlier, I think this is this was the first time ever that uh, an ADA compiler ran a free BSD. In Lenny, I added support for set jump, long jump support, which is interesting for embedded applications, in addition to zero cost exception handling. I added debugging packages for everything. Yeah. And in, in uh, today's version, squeeze, now we have a new, an updated Debian ADA policy, which I'm going to go into <coughs> detail now. So that's uh, that my plans for the future. Like I said, to <coughs> reinstate multi-lib support in, in Debian, but this time right out of the box without needing, without anyone needing to recompile the libraries. And also try to make it uh, easier to construct uh, cross-compilers. Uh, there are several people who are now interested in, in cross-compilers targeting things like the Lego milestones or things like the Arduino. My reward. But basically, that's the reason why I'm doing all this. It's uh, I take a lot of pride in, in, in seeing these curves go up. The red line is, uh, which is the, the uh, earliest one, corresponds to the GNAT package. When I started doing <coughs> this, it was the only ADA compiler, and around this time, uh, GNAT, the package GNAT, became empty. And it simply uh, depends on the current default version of the compiler. So this, starting with this point, uh, we have 4.1, which was really GCC 4.1 with the ADA support, was introduced. And as it be, well, at one point it surpassed the default version. So look at this uh, red line as the number of people who use the default. And the other lines are people who don't use the default. They don't have to use the default compiler, so they don't install the GNAT package. Uh, very recently, this line started to go up. There's a lot of people using GNAT 4.1. I, I really don't know what to think of this. <laughs> Apparently, a lot of people started using an old version of Debian suddenly. I don't know why. This could be some cluster place. Some? Some cluster place where they have like. 500 Could computers. Could be. Approximately right. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, maybe it's a big cluster using uh, <laughs> yeah. hundreds of compilers, hundreds of instances of the compiler. Um, and, well, it goes to say that this, uh, if they are using, I, I think this corresponds to uh, to Lenny, the then five Lenny. Mm -hmm. So they're, they're using, no, even the different before that, that's Edge. Oh, wow. So these are people who are still using Edge from 2005. 2006. Well, it's a cluster running now for the first time still. All fails. <laughs> <laughs> That's weird. No. The cluster got it up running out all. Yeah. After some hardware problems. <laughs> or maybe they, they changed the firewall configuration yeah. and now it got out to be fixed. Where do you get these numbers that's just from the download from the Debian server? Yes, this, this no, is no. the Debian no. popularity um, contest. Popcorn is, is a package that you install on the Debian machine, um, or can install on the Debian machine, and will get this is on the install packages and, and their use and send it anonymized to a central server. So we have the ability to see how many people are using a particular package. Yeah. Okay, now a little bit more details about how ADA libraries are packaged in Debian. They're not really very special as far as libraries go. Uh, so the, 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 the Debian policy for ADA mandates that every library must consist of at least two packages, preferably, no, sorry, at least three packages, preferably four. The three packages are the runtime library, uh, the development library, classic, and then the debugging library, containing the debugging symbols detached from the library. And then optionally, the uh, documentation package. So this is all classic uh, for Debian, that is. 
Uh, this means that if you want to run a program that needs a library, you only need to install the runtime library package. If you want to develop this library, then you need, in addition, the dev package and possibly the debugging symbols package. That means that uh, people who simply want to use the program don't have to install the development environment just to run the program. I believe this, uh, this is true for most uh, distributions nowadays, not just Debian. Uh, Debian provides for three uh, possible relationships between packages. In fact, I think there's a fourth one, now there's a breaks relationship. So uh, one package can depend on another, one package can be recommend another package, and the package can suggest another package. And then the Debian installer will use these dependencies to choose whether or not to install a package. So you can ask it to install <coughs> recommended packages by default. Now, what, make the, what, what makes the uh, ADA packaging a little bit more special is the way uh, that we place the files provided by the dev packages in a consistent place. So all the libraries are in the same place. So it's very easy for an ADA programmer to discover what libraries are installed on the system and to discover what is available to them as a programmer that they can reuse. Basically, all the sources going to this directory, user share, ADA, ADA include, slash library, and the library is a directory with the name of the library. Uh, this is a, a path name that I uh, didn't choose myself because it was proposed earlier as part of the GNU ADA environment specification, which was a very uh, old attempt at standardizing the way that uh, people would install libraries on their development systems. I decided to be compliant with this proposal and not try to invent my own. So now, this is the de facto, if you like, a standard for where uh, people expect a library to be installed uh, in their program, if, if they want to program in ADA. Every library provides a project file. In fact, this is the project file, GPR, that project. Uh, this is mandatory for the Debian policy for ADA. And in fact, not all upstream libraries provide project files, but uh, since they are required in Debian, we simply add a new project file for each library. And now people have come to expect uh, to find a project file in this directory. In fact, in Debian, I also patched the compiler so that it looks in this directory by default. This all means that for an ADA, ADA programmer, it becomes extremely easy to discover the libraries that are installed and to use them in their program. In contrast, if you don't have uh, Debian and you are a ADA programmer and you'd like to use some libraries, then most of the time you have to download them from source, from their upstream authors, and then compile the library for yourself, discover any incompatibilities between the libraries and your other libraries, and then uh, discover how to use this library in your program. It could be with a product file, or it could be with compiler switches, and things like that. With Debian, all of this hassle goes away. You know that there will be a product file that you can use directly. So this is a project file. This is how it looks like. The syntax is very reminiscent, reminiscent of ADA. Uh, this is a project file that describes a program, test GTK. It's actually provided with uh, GTK ADA. And in this project file, you specify where the sources are, where your object files will go. This is a directory. Where your executable files will go, this is also a directory. <coughs> you provide, you say, what is the main program. The, actually, uh, um, in ADA, your uh, main program, the, the program that you're, the sub program that starts, the program doesn't have to be called main, it can be called anything. 
So in the project file, you specify the name of this subprogram, which is your main entry point. Then there's a package compiler uh, in which you can provide some uh, compiler switches. Uh, in this line, I only provide default switches. These are the switches that apply to all the source files. But in addition to this, optionally, you can add special switches for just one file, for example. And the main, the main line of this program is actually the first one. With gtk 892gpr it's quite magic. Because when it sees this line, the compiler will know where to look for the, this GPR file, which is provided by the development package. It will then read this file and know where to look for the sources of the library. So it has to check for the uh, that every time you call the library, you are compliant with the you know, parameter profiles and stuff. It will also know where to look for the shared library, and it will automatically link your executable program with this shared library. This is all transparent to the, to the program. Now, I'm reaching the, uh, the technical parts <coughs> of the presentation which I'd like to spend a little bit more time on. Here is an excerpt of the ISO standard for the Aga language. It says, basically, that when the compiler emits an executable file, an executable program, then it must guarantee that the entire executable is up to date with respect to all of the sources, the complete closure of all the sources. If you change one source file, then the compiler must discover that you've changed this source file, recompile the relevant compilation units, and then recompile any other compilation units that depend on it. That's what I, I meant when I said that uh, the language, the Ada language, includes proper support for separate compilation. If you are an ADA programmer, you almost never need make. You need project files, because make is included in the compiler. But it has an implication for packaging, because it means that if you update a package containing a library, then the language rules say that all executables that depend on this library are now out of date and must be recompiled. I'll go into that a bit later. Uh, for now, let me explain how GNAT implements this language requirement for consistency. What it does is that every time it compiles a unit, a source file, it emits an object file, but it also emits an ADA library information file, ALI, which is simply <coughs> a text file. And this text file contains the checksum. Uh, I, th I think it's a CRC32, it's quite simple. The checksums of the source file corresponding to this unit. And the checksum is calculated over the source file, excluding uh, the white space, and the comments. So if you s just change comments in your source file, this does not invalidate the <coughs> code file. It also contains references to all other ALI files, that is to all other compilation units that your unit depends on. And this is how ADA, uh, the, the compiler is able to provide you with full cross-references between all your units. There are users besides uh, recompiling and, and implementing a proper uh, separate compilation because um, uh, the ADA mode of MX and GPS also leverage this dependency information to help you navigate through your code. So you can navigate a very large code base very easily thanks to this compiler. Now, if you are going to use a library in your ADA program, then you need the sources of the library for the syntactic level, and you need the ALI files of the library. So that the compiler can determine whether or not 
your sources are up to date with respect to the library. That's why all the development packages in Debian provide the ALI files read-only in this standard directory. So, if one ALI file changes, that means this unit has been recompiled, and so everything that depends on this unit must also be recompiled per language rules. The dreaded indirect FTBFS scenario. FTBFS is Debian jargon for fail to build from source. That's what FTBFS stands for. It's a scenario that can happen because of the language rules. Suppose you have two libraries, one that depends on another, and a program P that depends on the food. Now you upgrade the bar. Dev, but you keep lib foo dev, which means that you change the ALI files for lib bar. Now, the language rules say that everything that depends on lib bar becomes out of date and must be recompiled. But you don't recompile lib foo dev. You don't provide new versions of the ALI files. Now you try to recompile the program P, and you get an error message saying, foo.adb must be compiled. And if you look carefully, you see that what needs to be recompiled is in the library that you forgot to update. But most of the people will say, oh, but uh, I already have the latest version of both packages. So what's happening? Is it a bug in libfoo? No, it's not. Is it a bug in libbar? No, it's not. Is it a bug in p? No, it's not. It's simply that uh, the full library must be recompiled per language rules. So, we want to avoid this. To avoid this, we have to understand that the ALI files <coughs> create a very strong dependency at the source level. They represent what sources what version of the sources depend what, on what other version of the sources. And we have to capture this dependency information directly in the package system of the distribution, which means in the Debian packages. So we have to somehow reflect these strong dependencies between packages. So, we considered a number of options to do that. One was to say that package P build depends on some precise versions of the other libraries. But this, we quickly realized that this doesn't work. It's, for one thing, it's not maintainable. And for another thing, in Debian, uh, we have what we call binary non-maintainer uploads, bin NMUs, which means that uh, anybody can send an email to a Debian administrator saying, oh, please recompile this library. Uh, usually they do this with the C libraries uh, because some include file has changed and they need to recompile because it changes the ADI, something, something like that. This uh, actually never happens with ADA because of the consistency rule. But we must still be compatible with bin N and use because that's Debian policy. So we have two good reasons why this first solution is not viable. So we've devised a second solution, which means it consists in adding an arbitrary number in the name of the package. This number we call the ALI version. It is quite similar to the SO version of shared libraries, but it doesn't change when the ABI changes, it changes when the ALI changes. Now, with this solution, it becomes, it becomes impossible for a programmer to forget the precise version of the development package that we depend on, because there's simply no option. They must provide this number, because that's the name of the package. So they cannot forget uh, to add the, the proper dependency information, and the dependency information can never become wrong. And 
Question? Yes. Can you install multiple libfoos then? Libfoo 1, 2, 3 at the same time? Uh, this is up to the person who provides the packages. So uh, in theory, yes, but in practice, we don't have an, an instance of that because uh, we simply don't have the manpower to provide uh, to support several versions of the library. But it's, it's feasible in theory. It really depends on the library. Now, with all this, the consequence, uh, I believe, is that Debian is now, today, the best you can get if you're an NIDA program. Why? Because it has long-term support by definition. And ADA programmers tend to like that. Because it's a binary distribution, so you don't have to recompile everything. It's already done for you on multiple architectures. You get a wide choice of libraries. Uh, you know that all the libraries will be compatible with one another at the binary level and at the source level. You have a lot of Debian specific patches that make everything just work. This includes not only the libraries uh, that I mentioned earlier uh, that, are, that are built from the sources of GCC, but it also includes various uh, uh, minor adjustments to some libraries or to GPS, to things like that. Uh, the fact that the compiler will look in a standard place for project files. You know, everything is done to take the hassle out of discovering libraries and using libraries in your program. There's a new mailing list uh, since uh, earlier, since, since last year, uh, called Debian Ada at list.debian.org, uh, which is where everyone interested gathers. The other place, if you're interested in ADA, is of course the news group, com.bang.ada, which is not specific to Debian, but it's very uh, well attended anyway. Um, and all these characteristics make Debian very attractive to people who simply want to write software in ADA and make it work. But, like I said, the competition is finally catching up, which means that there are some other distributions that are now starting to also provide good support for ADA. And I'm going to talk about them now. I'll just keep this one. So, Gen2. Um, I'm not a Gen2 developer. So what I'm going to say now might be a little bit wrong, but I tried to uh, read about uh, what Gen2 provides uh, uh, as far as Ada is concerned. And it seems to be the exact opposite of what Debian does, which is good, because it means that another set of people might be interested in Gen2. And this set are basically the hackers. Why? Because Gen2 is a source-based distribution. It helps you recompile the world uh, because it thinks that recompiling the world is good. So if you like to recompile everything, use Gen2. Another consequence of this is that they provide you with a choice of compilers. You have both GPL editions and non-GPL editions that allow you to write proprietary software. So you get a choice, and then you can recompile everything with your chosen compiler. It also has a nice wide choice of libraries to choose from. So this is also a, a distribution that provides very good support for ADA programmers. Except you have to recompile everything, and you have to know that some libraries will not necessarily be compatible with other libraries. In FreeBSD, not Debian GNU K3BSD, because Debian GNU K3BSD is Debian. So I've already covered the existing support in the above slides. So if you, have, if you use pure BSD, pure FreeBSD, then currently the support for ADA is very bad. I think you have one outdated version of the compiler, and that's basically it. But 
there's one, one guy, John Arino, who uh, has started work on this. He seems to be very competent and dedicated, and I've, I've been in contact with him in the past. He uh, patched uh, GCC uh, to uh, introduce support for FreeBSD in the compiler, because this support was absent. He's going to send these patches upstream very soon now, because uh, GCC 4.6 is in deep freeze, it's going to be released very soon, and immediately afterwards it will become possible to send patches uh, for the next version of GCC, so he will do that. And now uh, he already has uh, the startings of uh, a suite of packages in the FreeBSD uh, vault stream. So uh, watch this space if you are a FreeBSD developer interested in ADA. Uh, things are moving in the right direction. Similarly, for NetBSD and DragonflyBSD, the same guy, John Marino, uh, has also done a lot of work for these two platforms. And he actually works on uh, FreeBSD, NetBSD, and FlyBSD in parallel. And his policy is to upload his new packages to all three of them simultaneously. For now, uh, he only supports uh, I386 and AMD64 platforms, so no MIPS, no Spark, no uh, ARM currently, but it, will, it might come in the future. He's now working in uh, GNAT for Android and ARM, in fact. So he's going to provide a compiler that, that allows you to program in ADA on your Android devices. Ada and other distributions. Uh, this is basically uh, one project in SourceForge, where uh, a small group of uh, people, I think there are, there are five or six people, have uh, since uh, several years started to provide RPM packages. Mostly RPM, but also some packages for Solaris and some for Mac OS X. So if you are on Fedora or SUSE, then this is where you should go for the source source project. Uh, if you want to get binary packages, I think they have the compiler, they have GTK ADA, um, and they have a few other libraries like that. But it's nowhere near as complete as Debian, unfortunately. All right, that was the last slide. Um, and Miguel, or we we turn. Are we doing the <coughs> question time for both yeah, the lecture? No, I think what you, uh, while you prepare for your speech, I can take questions right now. So if there are any questions for, while you prepare for your demo. I have one more so question about the ALI version thing. Um, that's fine if you um, do all the packaging uh, in, within Debian. But now if I build my own other package and if I get some other program from other con contributors I'm running in a pretty much update how if my packages con uh, depend on ALI, ALI version 1 and um, foreign packages or programs uh, depend on ALI version 2 and, uh, three yeah. two and year shipping 3. And right, that's basically the reason why the, uh, uh, the distribution from ADA Core, for example, they, they also have a large collection of libraries which you can download from ADA Core, but they are only in source form, no binary. This, this is how they avoid the great help, because then the compiler takes care of the upgrades for you. Which means that you have to recompile everything that needs to be Gentle is right. <laughs> in that sense, Gentle is right. That's correct. In that case, Gentle is right. Because if you think that recompiling is good, then Gentle is right. <laughs> of course. But uh, let me tell you that there are things in data that take a long time to compile. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm sure you have experience. I have experience with that. Any other questions? Um, yes. Um, are there any plans to use LVM for ADA apart from um, the ah. CC LVM? Yeah, LVM. That's a, that's an interesting uh, LLVM. Uh, there's uh, one guy who started porting the uh, GCC, <coughs> the ADA frontend of GCC to the backend of LLVM. He actually got something working with uh, the frontend of GCC 4.2 with the LLVM backend. So it is possible now to write ADA programs using LLVM. 
how well supported is it? It's, well, it's not well supported. That's the problem. Because just one guy who did this in his spare time, uh, and it's not yet packaged, as far as I know, in any distribution. So it's quite experimental at the moment. But if you're interested in that, you're welcome to contribute. And I'll be very happy to include it in Debian in the future. Any other questions? Okay. The stage is yours. Thank you. So, uh, hello everybody. I'm going to do an example of an ADA package. Uh, it is a, a software that comes from my lab at the university. What we want to accomplish is we have a single upstream tarball and we're going to add our own builded system, which is a distribution agnostic. It could be valuable to any distribution. Uh, and then out of it, we're going to create a single source package for Debian. And the source package will yield four packages. One, which is a library with all its variants, development, and debug. And the other one, which are the executables. Just so we know what we are talking about, MAST is a software that we use in, in our lab to do some real-time analysis. Means compute and execution, uh, execution times, jitter, etc. For what it matters to packaging, it is under GPL v2, so we can package it. It's, it's uh, acceptable for, by Debian. And it uses two external libraries, GTK Ada and XML Ada. Uh, the problem is, uh, is that the original upstream, upstream build system is not suitable for packaging because it doesn't uh, place all the binaries in, in a centralized place. So, uh, how it, see, it is, is it divided? Uh, it has an internal general purpose library that it might be used by different programs, so I have decided to create a library package out of it. Uh, there are a lot of common, uh, uh, common sources that are used repeatedly in all the executables. We could create an static library with them, but it doesn't make sense because we are not going to install it. Uh, so I just reuse them in the, in the uh, compilation, but the nice thing that we're going to make is that we're not going to compile them again. And then we have five, say, five projects that use some executables that will be packed, packed, packaged together as must. So first of all, we're going to talk about the GPR building system. Uh, as Ludovic uh, told us, we don't use make files as the general rule uh, to, to build ADA programs, because Gnat makes takes care of dependencies automatically, and it follows the ADA compilation model. Uh, however, we give some, some files to drive how Gnat makes works, to specify in which directories we want to place the binaries or to take the sources from. Uh, some specific switches such as the bug optimization, etc. So the idea that you don't make with the GPR files is intelligent enough to do all the uh, all the hard thing of creating a, a library with the FB switch, the zone name, etc. And uh, and we just uh, make our our make file could be a rules, the end rules could be a script, a series of GNAT make. I have done the, here the dynamic uh, compilation uh, explicitly, but it would, be, it would have been necessary because the uh, dependency system would recreate the library. And so uh, what we need is uh, one file for the library, one GPR file, one GPR file for the shared code, and then an individual GPR file for the individual projects. I'm going to show an example of each. So this is the library GPR5. It has some information about the library, the name, the SO version, whether it is going to be built statically or dynamically. Uh, since we're going to build both for the package, we have used the external the, a switch mechanism that uh, we just use the same file twice, once for dynamic and another for static. Uh, then here we specify where it will be placed by the building system, and the, these are the directories. The input directory is the source, the intermediate directory is the object here, 
and these are this is where the uh, AD files here, uh, which are used to track all dependencies, will be placed and exported. Then we can specify some switches with the sub package. This is Ada syntax. Uh, we, we can do switches for the compiler, for the linker, for the binder, for different tools that GNU uses. And so here we just say uh, debug. This is the common one. Uh, the common one doesn't generate a library, it does not generate an executable needed. But it says where it, it gets its sources and where it will place its objects. Uh, so there, and again, the switches. By the way, the switches that, that we use here are typically uh, GCC oriented. So you don't need to know specific things about ADA to do optimization, to do debugging. As you can see, the GPR file uh, hides uh, the specific uh, hassle of, of creating a, a Debian a, a make file rule for, for each thing. And uh, as an example of the big, uh, we use one library with, with the, the specific GPR file. Uh, here we use not include, that's one thing of, of ADA. Uh, in C, when you include something, you just blindly copy it, so you, you're going to use everything. In ADA, when we use a package or a sub a project file, we use it when we want. So it's, it's like a resource, so if we need it, at that moment, we take it. Uh, then we have the, the, main, the main files listed here, so we can have different ones, the directories, and the switches. So this gives the resulting uh, layout that we have chosen. We have chosen to, to group everything together under build, so the clean will be much easier. And uh, we have object directories for the library in, it, in its dynamic and static forms, and for the different projects. Uh, we have a, one thing that there, there are some common file names here and here, since they are in different directories with their own ALE files, that doesn't create a problem. That, 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 that's not a problem. If we wanted to put everything together in the object, uh, there would be some conflicts. So that's why I chose to use separate directories. These are the exported ALE files that uh, would be used for dependency when we link against the library, the library itself, and the executables. It's important to note also that we typically have two files, uh, well, apart from the static one. The, the one, which is the file, uh, has the same name as the so name. And then uh, we will see that to use it to link against, we will create a, a typical uh, symbolic link. In normal uh, libraries in Linux, in Linux you, find, you find three files. The file itself, a sim link with the sub name and a sim link with the development name. In Ada, uh, we don't we don't need that because as soon as the file changes, as Ludovic explained, we need to generate another one. So we only use one one file with the sub name. Uh, we need another CTR uh, GPR file, which is the one that will be installed once the library is installed. So it has, a, it is generic in the sense that we don't know where we will install it, so we put a prefix. Uh, and it doesn't have the, uh, the objective because we're not going to use it. It is important that it has an externally built. Uh, this is used to, uh, to prevent uh, from, the, from the user to automatically rebuild the library. So uh, again, what happens if we change the one source file and we recompile it, the ALEI will be outdated. And if we try to build a, a project with this library, the GNAPMAKE will ask for the library to be recompiled. And since we are not root, we cannot change it. So the, the choice is to prevent it. The GNAPMAKE will give a, will report the error, but will report the error on the, on the package that needs to, uh, to get updated with the library. So 
we know where, what is going on. So that's all about building. What I'm talking, I'm going to launch the build, if you want. It is, okay. As you can see, or I hope you can see something. Mm. Uh, well, we are building the master editor, but there might appear some files required for, from other files on demand, master analysis, maybe. So uh, the, the building starts from the top topmost main file, and as soon as a, a compilation unit is needed, in that make will go to the different directories specified in the GPR files to find them. So once we have the, the building, we need to do the installation. And here we're going to follow the ADA policy in general, uh, which concerns the library package, the library development package, which is used to develop against with the library, and the lib package. The library package, we, go, we copy the lib file uh, to the desk, desk dir. It's important if you make a, a make file to honor the desk dir variable. That would be that would make life easier for Debian packagers, and eventually at the end, you should run LD config to update the LD cache like any shared library. For the library development package, uh, we create the same link also as in a normal library, but uh, and we copy the static library. But we need to do things which are not common in the C, in the general C libraries. First of all, copy the LD files and put them with only in a destination that we have chosen to be lib ada ada lib library. This allows the GNAP make to find the ali files because they will be declared in the exported GPR file and to have a, a centralized place to, to place them. You also need to copy the ABS files which play the role as the .h files in C, but since uh, some libraries use use generic implementations like C templates, maybe some other ADB files would be needed as well. So as a simplification, we copy all of them, ADS and ADB files, again in a predefined directory, which depends on the library. And then the exported GPR file. So this is how it, uh, it is done in a make file, for example. Uh, we copy, we create the directories, we copy the, the dynamic library, and then we use just these two, library, two variables for simplicity, the include and the lib. We create the libs, and then we, we copy the general exported uh, GPR file, which is generic, put in the prefix instead. We put it read only, we install the, the ADS and ADB files, and we put the, the different, the other files. So this is also generic. How do we use a library? You can see the ADA policy for that. The preferred way is to create a top GPR file, like Ludovic and the example that we have given, uh, have shown. 
If you insist on not losing it, there are some switches in the NAT make to, to make him find the ADS and the ADI files, and you need to specifically link against the library, or you can use environment variables. So summarizing, again, for every library, we need one internal GPR file, with, which will be used to build the library, and eventually other packages, other, other files that are included in the same package. We need one exported GPR file, which will be installed after the library is installed. And the installation, we copy the library statically dynamic the files, and we launch a config. Uh, then for each, if you want to create a project that uses that library, uh, for, for every project we need a GPR file and the installation just plays them in the path, in the executable path. Okay, now I'm going to enter in a typical Debian packaging. I'm not an expert in packaging Debian yet, but I've done some things. So I, I here put just some files for a basic example. Uh, we may start with dhmake, if you want, that creates the Debian algorithms. And then we, we go to Debian control, this is the source. Important, you need to depend on the app. And of course the development uh, libraries that you're going to use. And then this is the control file for the main packages. Automatically, essentially the depends, mix the pens, so that's nothing special. What it becomes interesting is for the library. The library has three, uh, three packages, the library, the development, and the debug. This is generated almost automatically. And I have chosen the case in the ADI version 2. That means that for some reason I have to recompile the library. I maintain the same uh, API, so the so name does not change. But uh, I, have, I have a new version of the library that will uh, that could uh, make, prevent uh, a user for uh, recombining a project. So what the ADA policy mandates is to, in to increase, to, we always put a name, uh, we, we append the name, the, the ADA library to the name of the library, and we put conflicts against the previous version of the library. So whenever you install the library, the other one will be removed. And since the name is different, you have to also change any any package that depends on it. So it, it's a way to say, okay, here's the problem, you need to change that. But at least you know where you have to do it. And then, uh, as a top make file, I'm, I am based on the upstream make file that, that I showed. So everything to, to compile reduces to do these kind of things. That was a test, say prefix, so you can ignore it. And then the Debian file with a new dev helper can build everything with DH uh, general target. We overwrite some compress because if you include some ADS or ADB files in your documentation, uh, like maybe CPP or .h in the examples, uh, it should, they should have become uh, compressed. It's, it is an extension that the dev helper doesn't know yet quite well. And uh, this is a typical maneuver to generate a debug package. Uh, yeah? I don't think you need to do that anymore. There's an option to uh, if the edge that you want the debug package. Uh, yeah, if the edge right. I'm not sure okay. You, uh, <laughs> it could be. You may, uh, I'll, I'll look it up. So for this to work, uh, we need uh, to create the install, the links, some files per, uh, uh, per package that we're going to build. This is again the uh, installation procedure. Nothing specific there. And that's all. While I'm talking, the build. has finished, and we could do an upstream stand if you want. Okay, any questions? Do we do a bit for myself?
The next speaker wants to come up to get ready this to so. Nice try. <laughs> <laughs> 